I'm pretty sure if you guys follow me on social media, you guys are aware on what's been going on. And I see this more as a venting outlet more than anything because these last couple of weeks have been the hardest for me. I really thought and hoped that I could film this video and come on camera without breaking down, but by the looks of it, <laughs> I don't think that's gonna happen. I'm trying so hard to stay strong, but it it's really taking everything. <laughs> Penny has been missing since Christmas Eve, December 24th. It's now been 20 days, I believe, yeah, 20 days that I have been without her. And every single day, it just gets harder and harder and harder. You guys know that Penny is my baby. I've had her for four and a half years. She's the love of my life. She's my best friend. She is my baby. <laughs> and I never thought that I would see the day where I would have to be without her. <laughs> oh God, this is so hard, you guys. Okay. Uh, let me get a piece of napkin here because uh, I'm really trying so hard to disguise myself with this hat. I cannot. Uh, so Penny has been missing since Christmas Eve. Um, we were actually out of town. I don't know if I mentioned it in a vlog, in my last Vlogmas, um, but we were supposed to spend Christmas with my family. We really wanted to make this Christmas memorable because my mom really wanted all of my siblings to be together. So we all kind of just went down which just to pinpoint and make it exact it is in mission texas it is down south um south of texas actually me and penny drove down there i believe we drove on tuesday the 22nd penny has been there plenty of times um so again it was nothing new to her it was nothing new to us so we went down there and come christmas eve <laughs> Um, she was let out for a potty break while I was actually out running errands and um, I was gone for maybe like four or five hours I was running errands doing like last minute Christmas shopping I remember before I left that day I gave Penny a kiss and I told her I loved her a little bit more than I usually do I don't know, I had this like weird feeling, you guys, and it's so weird. I held her face and I looked at her and I told her that I was gonna be back and for her to be a good girl, for her to behave, and that mommy was gonna come and give her some Christmas gifts. So I left that day. <laughs> And I don't know why I missed her so much while I was gone. It's like, if God was trying to tell me something, I don't know. It's so weird, you guys, honestly. I don't know how to explain it. But if I seem a little bit off, it's because I'm trying so hard, you guys, to keep it together right now. We get back to my family's house. And we go inside and I call out for Penny and she's nowhere to be found. I go to the room where she, you know, where I left her because every time we go to my family's house, Penny is always inside. The only time that we let her out is for potty breaks. So I go to the room and my brother is there and I'm like, hey, where's Penny? And he's like, oh, I let her out because she needed to go potty. And so my stepdad was outside when we got there. So I go outside and I start calling out for her. My mom actually has three other dogs and a couple of cats. So as soon as I called Penny, like all the dogs came, but Penny didn't come to me. And so I'm looking for her. I tell my stepdad like, hey, where's Penny? And he was like, oh, she was just here. Like she's probably on the, on the other side of the house, you know? 
So he was like, she was just here like literally a couple of minutes ago. And I'm like, okay. So I start looking for her again, calling out for her. My nephew was helping me call out for her as well because we were excited to show her the Christmas gifts and we were just excited to see her. My nephew actually loves her too. So he was just like calling out for her. We were like, Penny, Penny and nothing. And my stepdad starts calling out for her too. He's like, she was just here next to me. So we're like, Penny, Penny, and nothing, right? So I run back into the house. My stepdad's like, she's probably in the house. And again, she's nowhere to be found. We look everywhere. At this point, my brother gets up and starts helping me look for her. He starts calling out for her. My mom, my grandma, everybody's just looking for her. And in the back of the house, there's like this big shed and we thought she was hiding there. No, she wasn't there. There's a couple of like dog houses that my mom has and she wasn't there either. So at this point I start freaking out. I start panicking while we're searching for her since it's like eight ish. It's like 8 PM. You know, it's already dark. Um, mind you, the temperature dropped that night. So it was like in the thirties, it was super cold and there was fireworks as well. The next door neighbor was uh, popping fireworks like left and right. So there was like plenty of fireworks. So I'm trying to scream out her name. I'm trying to yell out for her. I'm trying to call out for her um, super loud, you know, so that she can hear me. But then there's fireworks, you know, right next to us. I'm freaking out. And my brother's like, Alex, just let's hop in the truck and let's just go look for her. She probably got out. And in my family's home, there's a gate. There's a fence. The entire house is gated. I was actually the last person to arrive. Me and my nephew got there and I remember the gate being closed. Like the gate was closed. There wasn't anything out of the ordinary where I would have been like, oh, this gate's open, the dogs are gonna get out. No. So my, me and my brother already knew like, okay, she couldn't have gotten out because we've been here all day. Nobody has left the house. You just got here and the gate is completely closed. At this point, me and my brother get in the truck. My mom is looking at cameras because we do have a um, video surveillance at the house. So they stayed behind just looking at the cameras and me and my brother start going around the neighborhood. But again, you guys, it's so hard because it's so cold. It's super dark and there's fireworks everywhere. So regardless how loud I yell for my baby, She's scared of fireworks, like Penny is scared of any little sound, you know? She freaks out easily, so I kind of already knew that my baby was in danger because she's already scared of fireworks. So that was giving me major anxiety, like I already knew that this was going to be bad. But I still tried, you guys, I still tried. I yelled out her name, I was trying to be louder than the freaking fireworks we went around the immediate neighborhood like that neighborhood right there it's kind of like a circle so we were just going through it like two three times yelling out for her then i was like no i need to walk so i ended up like walking around the neighborhood yelling out for her nothing and i searched you guys and searched and searched and searched and at this point it was getting late and i ended up searching like the next two three neighborhoods down from my family's house but again then it's getting late you know and at this point it's already like 10 11 midnight hits and there's even more fireworks and what was supposed to be such a memorable christmas for me it was the worst it really was. I didn't even get to celebrate with my family. It kind of just ruined our Christmas Eve. We spent hours searching. I didn't want to stop. I didn't want to go back inside. I, I just wanted to search for her all through the night, knowing that she was out there in the cold, scared because of these freaking fireworks. <laughs> Penny is not mid. For the outside so that scared me even more you guys can just imagine like i was just up i was searching searching still searching when it came to be like 2 a.m 3 a.m i was still out there in the cold because no matter what i knew that my baby was waiting for me 
the next day, which is Christmas Day, rolls around, right? And one of my friends actually made me a four-mile radius going north, south, east, west. And um, we searched. It practically took all day, you guys. Like, I started super early. And we still couldn't find her. And the days after that, you guys, I continued to search for my baby. I continued to look for her. I made flyers right here, delivered them um, in people's mailboxes, gave them to people that I would see outside, that I would see walking, posted them up, posted her on Facebook and every lost and found pet page that I found around the area. Every single resource that you can think of I posted her on. I've tried everything, you guys, and it's been 20 days, and there's no sign of her. Nobody has seen her, called shelters, animal control, gone to the shelters to make sure that I look in person, gave them flyers. At this point, I feel like I don't even know what to think at this point, you guys. Like, I feel like someone has her. I rescued Penny when she was one. She had been abused and neglected by her previous owners. So I knew that she was gonna be such a special dog to me. I was the only love that she knew. And she's the only love that I know. As much as I didn't wanna come back, I had to, um, I had to take care of a couple of things. But I feel guilty, you guys. I have so much guilt in me and I don't think I can live with it. Um, I just, I, I don't know how to live without her. I don't know how I'm supposed to live without seeing her face every day, going to sleep with her, waking up to her. Looking at the cameras, she, was standing at the door waiting for someone to open it for her. <laughs> and then she heard something. I'm not sure what it was because you, there's no audio, but something scared her. It scared all the dogs. She was surrounded by the other dogs as well. And something happened to where they all got scared and you see Penny running towards the gate and then um, she's out of range because it, 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 it just got way too dark. The camera didn't get to capture that. So that was the last we saw of her and that time was around like 7.30ish, like 7.38, almost 7.40. And I got home at 8.05, you guys. If she would have just waited for me or if I wouldn't have gone shopping, if I wouldn't have taken as long, I would have still been with her. <laughs> she has been there through it all with me. Me and Penny have gone through some of the hardest times together. <laughs> and knowing that she's not here with me right now just breaks my heart. I'm still hopeful and I still have faith that my baby will come back to me. There's been a lot of people actually still helping me while I'm out of town. It does give me a peace of mind knowing that there's a lot of people willing to take the time and search for her while you know, I'm taking care of other things here back home. I know that I'm gonna continue my search, whether it's me personally or other people again. I'm so grateful and thankful that many of you guys out there and many different people have been looking for her. The support that we have been getting from everybody has just been amazing. But before I end the video, I kind of just wanna put out there that there is a cash reward. I am offering a $1,000 cash reward for anybody that returns Penny back to me. I will leave all the links where Penny is posted down below. If you guys can share it, it will mean the world to me. Hopefully the next video that you guys see, <laughs> um, me and Penny will be reunited, I hope. But please, guys, I need all the prayers. I need all the prayers ever possible. A nightmare scenario for any pet owner losing your pet during a holiday vacation. But that's exactly what happened to one Houston resident who traveled to Mission during Christmas. Alejandra Garcia is still searching for her dog, Penny, but she isn't doing it alone. She has the support of a WhatsApp group and Facebook pages created by Valley residents to help reunite pets and their owners. 
Sylvia Maria met Garcia through one of the Facebook pages and has been helping her look for her pet at shelters. Created the WhatsApp so we can um, help each other find our pets and like just focus on 15 to 20 animals, you know, in certain areas. But I just want the community to know that not all dogs on the street are stray dogs. You know, some might belong to someone. Both women lost their dogs at a time when they weren't wearing their collars. They recommend keeping them on and microchip your dog. But if you do end up losing your pet, they recommend checking apps like Nextdoor and Finding Rover, as well as local Facebook groups. For those links, you can head over to our website at valleycentral.com.